Hello, my name is Tom and I'm a data school consultant at the Information Lab. In this video, I'm going to go through the method of how we can shade between two lines using polygons. So just as an example, let me show you what we're going to create. So as you can see, we've got two line charts for two different metrics. And then we have shaded between the two. So this is really good for when you want to kind of show the difference between two lines and or two different metrics. And notice how this is currently one block color, but we're actually using polygons to shade this. So each individual uh, polygon is making up the shade of the color. So this is for a single shade, but we can also do it for uh, different shades. So then we can see the, the change. And as you can see, the darker the, the red or orange, the, the, the bigger the, the changes and the bigger the difference. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So I'm just gonna open up a new workbook and I've uh, connected to my data. So you can see that I've got my metrics and they're all in a single column. So I've got this XG and XGA. So my, these are my two metrics. And then these are gonna be my values. I've got my season and I've got my round and so on. So I'm gonna add a new sheet down in the bottom. And first I'm just gonna create my, my line chart. So for this, I'm going to use the round and I'm just going to move this up to be a um, be a dimension. So and I can use round onto my put that onto my columns. So I've got each individual round going across. Then for my rows, I'm going to use the sum of values. So again, yeah, this creates a bar chart, but we actually want this to be a line chart. So I'm going to put and put my metric onto color and change this to a line. So now you can see we've got our two line charts. Over here, we've got XG in the blue and XGA in the orange. So this is the basic chart, but now let's see how we can um, shade in between these two areas. So first of all, in order to get this to work, um, especially if we're going to be using the different colored shaded, we need to first densify our data and change this slightly within our data source. So first of all, I'm going to take our original worksheet, double click in here, and then I'm actually going to union our the same worksheet onto it onto another onto itself. So just drop that on union, and we'll notice that if I open up and edit the union, we've just got worksheet and worksheet one. So this is exactly the same data. We just doubled it, so we've unioned it and stacked it on top of each other. Notice how we've now got sheet and table name. So if I scroll down, um, we've now got worksheet and worksheet one. So we're actually going to make a calculation from that. To help us understand if it's if what um, what sheet it's coming from, so I'm going to call this actual or next. Now this will come become clear later in the video why we're doing this, but for now I'm just going to put if the table name equals worksheet one, then I want this to equal next. Else I want it to equal my actual. we go so actual so this is essentially saying if it's worksheet one next if it's worksheet then it's going to be actual press ok so this is our data ready so now we can go back to our to our worksheet where we've got our line chart we now need to create a few different table calculations in order to create the polygons so basically what we want to do if i highlight a year or a couple of years we want to be able to draw a polygon between each of these four points so one two three four and back to one. So we need to number each of these differently. So what we want ideally is starting here on the blue line, we've got one, two, three, and so on, to 55, and then 56, 57, so on, back down here. So first of all, I'm going to create a new calculated field, call that index one, and that's just going to be index. So that's just my index function, Press OK. Now, if I bring this onto my labels, notice how we've got for XG, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and the same for XGA. So we don't actually want that at the moment. We just want our two different lines to be numbered one or two, depending on if it's which metric. So we're going to edit the table calculation, specific dimensions, 
and we are just going to select metric only. So deselect round and select metric. You can now notice how the blue line is all got ones and the orange line is all got twos. So that's the first index complete. Now we're going to create a new calculated field and we're going to call this index two. This is going to be the same. So it's just going to be an index. Press OK. And now I'm going to replace this on my index one. So just by dragging and dropping on top. And this time I don't need to edit the cal table calculation. So notice how it says table across, or I can use specific dimensions for round. It's going to be the same. This time the numbers go from one through to 46 and the same on the orange line. We now want to create a this number sequence, but going in the opposite direction. So starting with one here. So for this, we're going to use a new calculated field. And we're going to call it last. And instead of index this time, we're going to use the last function. Press OK. Replace this calculation. And then notice how it starts at zero. So we're actually going to add one to this last calculation as well. So we can right click, edit, plus one. And if I press apply, notice how our number sequence now goes back in the opposite direction, which is great. And then one final calculation, which we need here for table calculations is size. So this time we want to just return what the, the highest number is for each point. So in this case, 46. So we're just going to use size, drag size and replace it onto last. And now we have 46 for all of them. Now we can start using these calculations, so the four we've just created, to start numbering our points in the correct order. So this time I'm going to create a new calculated field and call this path. Let's move my calculation up. And then for this one, it's going to be if index one equals one, then index two, else we want to add our last plus our size calculations and press OK, replace path from, and replace it on top of size. And notice this isn't quite right at the moment, but remember we need to update one of our table calculations. So edit for index one, we wanted that to be round oh, and select metric instead of round. Now notice how if we start on one, it goes all the way up to 46, and then starting on the orange line, 47, all the way back to 92. So you can notice how we're gonna have join all of our points up and our polygons are gonna go from here up to here and then back round to 92. So this is kind of the shape that we want. And we can also then create different polygons between each of these individual points as well. So that's all the table calculations. Um, the final calculation we need to do is just to update the rounds um, for the columns and the rows. So first of all, I'm going to create my rows calculation. So rows, that is going to be equal to if actual or next, which was the calculation which we used after union the data. If that equals actual, then we want to return our sum of values, which is in the view here. So I can drag and drop it in. Else, we want to have our round. Sorry, I've made a mistake. We don't want this one, we want our round. Else, we want to add our round plus one, end. So this is essentially saying, if it's the actual, then return the round. If it's the next, then return the next round. So as you notice, press OK. I can now put my rows onto here and making sure that it is a dimension. So there's no aggregation. I can remove my round. Notice how the line chart looks a bit different now because remember we've got both of our points. So one and two, both in here. So if I bring in the actual next just into the rows, you will see how it's kind of moved on one step. Notice how we've got it all shifted to the right. So I can just remove that. We now need to update our sum of values. 
So we can do a new created field. This is just going to be my value updated. So for this, I want to do if uh, my, I'm going to put it in an attribute calculation. So this is going to be my actual or next because I'm going to be using different uh, aggregations. I need to make sure it's all aggregated. So if that equals actual, then return my sum of values. Else, I want to look up, so this is a table calculation, the sum of values for the next value. So basically looking at the next value for the sum of values. So this is going to even out the shift to the right, which we had earlier. Compress OK. Replace the sum of values with our new values updated field. This just means we need to bring our round on back onto detail. So we need to actually see which round we're we're looking at. We've got lots of different splits now. So this is just going to update our table calculation. Edit table calculation, and this time we just want it to be for round to compute using our round instead. And okay. So now you can see we've got our line chart, and now it's looking kind of the same as what it was before. We can now create our polygons. So from line, we're just going to create a polygon. This actually means everything disappears, but we just need to move our path onto the path field. And it looks a bit odd at the moment. So this is kind of showing our two polygons, but for each individual shape here. So you can see the blue and orange. This is just going from the last. We actually just need to move our metric as well onto the detail. And here we go. It looks like our, our polygons now the shaded area between our shapes, which is great. We can actually now take this a bit further and make this a dual axis. So I'm just going to hold down control and create, create my second duplicated values added. And I can right click dual axis, make sure I synchronize the axes here. And I can hide this axis here. And now both of these are polygons. So we want one of them to be a line. So we can change it to a line chart, remove the path, and then hide the labels. We can then remove metric back to our color. So this is essentially the line chart which we had at the start. And you can see the XG and the XGA are now shaded in between. So if we just make this to a lighter color, this is the, the effect which we were going for. As you can see, each individual one between the weeks is a different color, a different polygon. So let's just say we want to take this a bit further. And um, we want to color each of those individual polygons to be a different color, depending on the difference in size of the of the two lines. So we can create a calculated field. I'm just going to call this color. And this is where we need to bring in some LODs because we need to um, make sure we're looking at the right um, level of detail for this. So I'm going to bring in the curly bracket. I'm going to fix this for each round. And for this, we want to return the max. And now if the metric is equal to x, g, then we want to return value. We can end that one. Make sure we cover up and finish off the brackets. I'm just going to bring this down onto a new line so it's nice and easy to see. So that's our first part. So we want to say, OK, take the value for each round for the xg. And then we want to minus the same calculation. So I'm just going to copy and paste. But this time we want it for the XGA instead. So this is going to say this is essentially take our XG value for each round and minus our XGA value for each round. So what's the difference? Press OK. And now for the polygons, we've got our color. We can now bring this onto our color field. And there we go. Each of our individual polygons is now being colored depending on the size and difference of each of the for each of the rounds. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel to check out other videos within this series and other related videos on Tableau and Alteryx.